Well, you join me here on the River Trent at East Stoke, and I've been fishing for about half an hour, uh, trying to catch some silver, some roach on tears. And I just changed my hook and gone to a lighter hook length, and we we're into a Trent barbel, which uh, do happen to frequent here quite a lot. And uh, Sod's law has dictated that it's decided to have a go at my tear when I've scaled down. So we're just going to try this really, really carefully to try and get this in, take our time, still try and feed the peg as well, and see if I can pull off a bit of a miracle. So I've scaled down to a 0.1 hook length and a size 14 Preston N40. So they are great hooks, but not particularly renowned for getting barbel out. And I'm just hoping that I haven't nicked the hook length anywhere or the barbel doesn't go on a mad run. Hopefully we might get to see it in a minute and it will just go on a bit of a surge. I'm fishing with the Cadence 14 foot match zero, which as you can see, can play these fish, these bonus fish that can come along along here. This is a beautiful stretch of the River Trent, my favourite stretch. The fishing here can be absolutely excellent and the beauty of it is it sometimes you just do not know what you're going to catch. As you can see the rod takes all of the lunges. I don't particularly like playing fish off the clutch if I can help it. I just try and feel through the rod and back wind. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Everyone plays fish differently. What a fantastic fight. I think it was just snagged up then just a little bit and I've just slackened off and then I've managed to move it. There's just a, a little weed or something just at the bottom end of the peg. These are actually quite crucial stages now. The fish could do a bit of a tail slap and could catch the hook length. It's still lively, it's still fighting. I want to try and get it up, try and get it on its back and just gently slip the net on there. As soon as it sees the net. But hopefully it's tiring and we've got half a chance. If I don't mess it up. What unbelievable fish barbel are.
Yes! Yes! Wow. What a fight on such light gear. I'm ecstatic. That is why I love this place. That is a lovely, beautiful barbel. Well, I can't believe I've got that fish in. Uh, I do fish for barbel quite a bit, but to get one out on a 0.1 bottom on an N40, uh, I didn't think I had a prayer to be honest, but just taking your time, letting the rod do the work. It just shows what actually you can do on balance tackle, light tackle. I'm gonna try and hold it up. Well, Chappie has very generously given me eight pound and I know he doesn't give I know he doesn't give his weights away easily. But to get that out on a point one is absolutely awesome. You just can't beat fishing this river. So we're going to put this uh, beautiful barbel back now. Uh, there's no barbel in the nets here in uh, Nottingham Piscatorials and uh, hopefully the net will be full of silvers at the end of the day. Well we've just, we just quickly weighed this fish and it is just over nine pound on a size 14 N40 01 bottom and the 14 foot zero, that is unbelievable. So the fish has been rested for quite a while now. We're just holding it upstream, just so it recovers. And we will hold it here as long as it takes. But what an absolutely fantastic creature. Worth all the time and effort it took to get it in. And there she goes, absolutely brilliant.
So we're here at East Stoke today, which we are a few pegs down from the famous peg one. Everyone knows peg one, James. Robbins did a, a video on there four years ago. It's a fantastic peg. But this part of the river here, I really love. Uh, it's known as the beach. And it is basically an aquarium. Um, I like to come and fish here for silvers, but normally you can get some really good bonus fish as well. Fishing with balanced tackle. The river here, it's about 50, 60 meters wide maybe. Where I'm fishing at the moment, I've got maybe eight or nine foot. Because the river is quite low at the moment and clear, I like to get out in the river anyway in the summer. And until the weather gets really cold where I can't stand in the river anymore, this is the way that I like to fish. Standing out in the river, minimal bit of tackle, keeping it simple and trotting whatever baits the fish are having. And what I've, I've discovered over the last couple of years is fishing seed baits, hemp and tares and elderberries, sometimes wheat as well. You don't just get the small fish on there, the roach, but you can actually, the barbel and the chub, you know, and even perch, they will take it as well. So this time of year, we were, this is mid-September now, it's just starting to get a little bit cooler, the, the nights are a little bit cooler, and uh, there's a bit of a, an upstream wind today, which is not the worst thing you can have here on the Trent, it's very rare, we, we get them sometimes. And seed baits at this time of year um, work really, really well. And I've tended to, to start fishing them from, from August onwards. And you can have some prolific sport here. This is quite a prolific stretch, or it can be. So you don't want to be under, under carrying on bait. So the minimum I would bring down here is at least one pint of tears and at least six pints of hemp, which is what I've brought down today. Uh, I also like to pick some elderberries as well. Uh, unfortunately, my favourite elderberry bush in Nottingham was chopped down by the local council uh, in the week. And um, it seems like the farmers around here have done some hedge work as well. So uh, I haven't got any elderberries in my mix today. So today I'm using a, a 14 foot rod. The reason uh, I really like 14 foot rods, it's over the years, uh, the rod technology has got f far, far better. And the rods we used to use 13 foots, you know, these 14 foots are actually lighter and, and very easy to handle. And the reason you want a longer rod is, is mainly for control of, of your float and, and your gear that's in the water. A longer rod just gives you a degree of control and there's always a balance and a payoff with that. that obviously if the rods go longer, you, you know, sometimes they might be a little bit more difficult to hold, but I have no problem. The 14s and 15 foots, you know, I love them. That's what I mainly use here on the Trent. So in the cadence range of 14 foot rods, there's actually a really comprehensive range. I think one of the best that's out there on the market. We have four rods at the moment in the 14 foot, starting with the zero, uh, which is the, the softer rod in the range, which is perfect for silvers. And then we go up to the ones and the twos and then we have a 14 foot three as well, which I've got set up today. So one very important aspect of trotting like this with seed baits is, is actually your feed, how much you're feeding 
and where you're actually placing it and all of that is determined really just on how how the fish are, are actually taking it so sometimes you might actually put your feed in front of your float and sometimes you'll put it on the float and sometimes you'll put it behind the float and the only way you get to know that is actually how how the fish are, are, are taking taking the bait and and trying to get as efficient as possible really to try and maximize your peg to to, to its best potential so I'm just feeding a pinch full of bait each time. It's hemp with a, a few tears mixed in there as free offerings. And at the moment I'm feeding above the float and I'm gently easing the stick float down and slowing it down so it's a little bit slower than the pace of the current and sometimes just gently holding back just a little bit. And hopefully your hook bait will go into that feed at, at some point and the fish will intercept it and take it. And the beauty of trying to ease it down the peg if the fish are going to take it that way is it's sometimes you can line them up in a way that you're almost putting the hook in their mouth. It's when you actually get everything correct and how the fish want it on the day. It's an amazing way of fishing. There's nowhere I'd rather be on a beautiful day like this than on this stretch of river at East Stoke, trotting a nice dotted down stick float, easing it down my peg and trying not to miss bites like that. <laughs> you must keep the feed going in all the time. This is a really big river. Uh, I'm fishing eight or nine foot deep here. So if you imagine that's all the way across and that goes on for miles and there's some deeper stretches further downstream as well. You, you know, you're going to struggle to overfeed here. Well, you can overfeed obviously, but don't be scared to put some feed in, especially this time of year. The fish are really hungry. They're, they're trying to fatten up for the winter. And by putting, putting that feed in, that's what gets the attention of the larger fish as well. It's been a fantastic summer fishing through here and in, into the autumn now. I, I do fish this stretch quite regularly. It hasn't really been affected by the hot weather at all. You've got, depending on the water level, even when it's low, there's nine, 10, 11, 12 feet of water. The fishing has been unbelievable. I've had bags of roach here to over 25 pound. Not always have I had a a bonus barbel or a bonus chub but on many occasions I have and very recently uh, in the last two weeks I've, I've fished here four or five times and I fished here a week ago we had nine barbel uh, they do live here and they are hungry uh, I bring friends here uh, uh, sometimes uh, people with kids uh, I was very privileged to bring uh, a Ukrainian mother here uh, a month ago with her four-year-old son and they had the fishing day of their life down here. They loved it. They caught 40 or 50 pounds of barbel and chub and uh, they've got video and photos that they can take home and have those memories here forever.
some of the days you can have down here, they, they're beyond belief really. The wildlife as well, there's kingfishers down here, white egrets, woodpeckers, green woodpeckers, buzzards. It's just a beautiful, beautiful part of the country to, to have the privilege to fish. I just want to go through the rigs I've been using uh, today. These are, if, for those people who've never fished a stick float before, uh, if you've never come across them, they, they can be made of wire uh, or it can be a heavy wood base, normally with a balsa body, uh, and they're normally domed. Uh, but this particular pattern that I really like using uh, has a, a insert which in, in different light especially, it really stands out really well. So if it's not a sunny day, uh, they still stand out fantastically against most backgrounds, which is why I, I really like to use them. On this Dave Harrell insert stick that I'm using today, the, it is attached by three rubbers. And these are put onto the line and then the float is attached afterwards. So the reason we do this is to make the floats interchangeable if the weather changes or for some reason the river comes up or goes down while you're fishing it means you could put a, a heavier loaded float on or a or a less heavy float on this one is a eight number four which is perfect for for the swim i'm using today the swim i'm fishing is about eight foot deep and the general consensus is that you use one number four shot for every foot of water that depth that you've got so I'm in eight foot of water, I'm using an eight number four stick. Just as an additional couple of points at the bottom of the attachment here, we tend to use a longer piece of silicon rubber uh, and it, have it over the flow to the, the end of the, uh, the metal or the, or the end of the wood if, it, if it's a wooden one. And it's just to, to stop twisting and tangles and, and the rig going into a mess. Um, also, we have a, a depth marker shot here, so you could move the shot up, leave that shot where it was, and then move it back down again, and you'd be fishing the depth that you were before. If you just wanted to, to change, just to add a couple of inches on, or five or six inches on, you can always go back to your original depth. What we also do as well is, I tend to hook my rig up to on the hook rigger, and then note where on the rod rings the uh, the top of the float comes so you can see on this section we're on the top section and it's the first rod ring and that is also a good way after you've plumbed up of knowing exactly what depth you're fishing at moving on to the shotting pattern i've put a spread bulk uh, below halfway to alleviate tangles if you put it a halfway or above you would tend to tangle the rig when you cast out so if you have it just below halfway it, it it alleviates that problem. We use a spread bulk rather than all the shot bulk together. It just lies just better on the line and uh, it gives you a nice uh, a gentle bulk and, and does the job of what it's supposed to do. Down the line then I have a, an arrangement of, of smaller shot number eights. Uh, sometimes I will put them as singles but uh, depending on how the fish are, are taking it you, you rearrange these. I've today the best rig has been putting a couple of doubles down the line and then three singles further further down uh, these are eights and then I've gone on to number nines I do like using number nine shots as my last shots they for me they seem perfect and I, I seem to have you know a lot of success using those moving on to the hook length um, I never put a shot on my hook length I've had so many trouble as people have in the past uh, with the shot nicking the line. I also tend to have quite long hook lengths as well and there's two reasons for that. The main reason is from my experience of fishing here, the fish tend to be more positive with their bites when your hook length is at minimum of 12 inches and sometimes we go 15 and 18 inches with nothing between the last shot and the hook. But the other main reason as well is when you hook larger fish, because you have a longer hook length, it gives you a little bit more elasticity, a little bit more cushion, 
and you've probably got a better chance of getting larger fish out on lighter hook lengths. So moving on to the hook, I've got a size 14 Camasan B520. I find these are very good hooks for tear fishing. I also use the Preston Innovations N40s for, for silvers. And to hook the tear, it's basically just hooking it through a major part of the body and gently easing the tear onto the hook, but also exposing the point and the barb so that when a fish does take it, you get a good hook hold. So I'll try and explain the, the way that I cast. Um, we're not fishing too far out, so it's a simple underarm cast. For those of you who've not seen it before, um, you need to hold the line about an inch or two inches above the hook so that doesn't get tangled up or in your hands. Create some tension in the tip of the rod and just gently swing the rod out, timing the release when you want to release. And before, before any of the float or the shot or the hook hits the water, you just want to gently put your fingers over the front of the spool just to feather the line and that will stop it landing in a tangle or, or a mess. If you've shotted your float up right as well, your, your pattern with your bulk and your droppers, if you feather the line as well, you shouldn't get tangled at all. And then when you're controlling the float through the swim, your fingers are over the front of the spool controlling the line. What I like to do when I first cast out is you can use the the rod almost like a pole in a way and just move the rod towards the float but doing enough just to hold the float back a little bit or ease it through and then as you're putting the rod further downstream you tend to let a little bit of line out and ease it through the swim. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, the roach have been uh, uncooperative, struggled to try and line them up at all. However, you can't complain when you hook one of these, except when you can't do anything with it because um, it is taking me down the river at the moment. I'm 99.9% .9 it's a barbel. And uh, I'm hoping I'll be able to drag it back up eventually. <laughs> So I've been fishing hemp and tares, feeding both, and uh, I've just had a single tear on a size 14 hook. I've got a 0.12 bottom on, so I've got half a chance of, of getting this out. But having said that, it has took me a long way down the river, and I don't want to put too much pressure on. So I'm on the 14 foot zero, which can cope with barbel and chub if you hook uh, bonus fish like this. There we go. Now we're just starting, hopefully, to hold it and make a little bit of progress. But you cannot be trotting on this river with a potential of catching bonus chub or barbel. But we could be here a while. It might seem a, a little bit of an unorthodox bait for barbel fishing tares, but I have to say the last two or three years I, on not just this stretch, on other stretches on the trend, I've had quite a bit of success and if I'm float fishing now, I would say 
tares would probably be my my go-to bait first for them feeding hemp and maybe some elderberries um i have been known i do fish with some weird bait sometimes i'm a big proponent of uh of fishing with blackberries or things that naturally drop in the water at this time of year and things like blackberries and elderberries that overhang onto the river they you know the fish do eat them and they really like them yeah i think i think there are roach in the swim they've been spooked uh, a little bit by the pike um, the pike that are mooching around and and feeding on them and obviously if you're feeding you know the tares with your hemp which i always do um you know the barbel are uh, obviously not as wary about the pike and uh you know they will mop them up i'm hoping at some point i will start to gain some line back yeah and i, I suppose as well i mean depending on your tears i mean you have black and brown ones you know if you try and darken them off as much as you can I, I don't tend to bother so much really but um you know they do look like pellets i suppose as well so you know barbel are used to them here people do fish pellets down here a lot as well i don't in particular but some people do my goodness this is the first time i can make a little bit of ground on this but we have a long way to go i mean even though this is the 14 foot zero and you know it is the the softest one in the 14 foot range and again it would be exactly the same with the 15 foot i mean this is a decent fish but i can hold it i mean look at the bend in that rod the rod is playing this fish i i have no problems trying to get these larger fish out on these more softer rods We've had some nice fish out on, on these. You know, they're not going to break. What you have to do in these situations is not rush anything, just take your time. If the fish wants to run, you're going to have to let it go. Hopefully not into a snag. To be fair, the river bottom here is pretty good. It's all gravel underneath everything, but there are rocks and stones. There are weed beds. Obviously when there's floods, things get washed down. But if you just take your time and don't rush things too much, hopefully you have a more than even chance of getting them in. Well, this has turned into an absolutely epic battle. Um, I've been down the river, up the river, and I'm now down the river again. Unfortunately, I cannot rush it. Um, and you just have to take your time. And obviously when you get the fish in, hopefully, make sure you give it absolutely plenty of recovery time. Luckily, the landing net fits perfectly inside the keep net so you can keep the fish there safe and secure. Um, or if I have to stand with it for 10 minutes, 20 minutes with it in the landing net, that's what you have to do. And I'm more than happy to do that. I'm hoping now that this fish is finally starting to tire. This rod has performed absolutely brilliantly. No, he's still... <laughs> Still doesn't want to come yet. So we just have to give it the respect it deserves.
just have to be careful here when they first come up to the surface. They can flip their tail, catch the hook length. Fantastic. Well, after an absolutely epic battle on the float, you can't beat Trent Barbel on the sea. Utterly fantastic. Let's let him go. Unfortunately, these fellas haven't quite fed as much as we'd have liked today, but I don't care, one iota. It's been a fantastic day. I've had a couple of barbel, and one to get one of nine pound, plus out on a 14 foot zero on a 0.1 bottom. It doesn't get anything better than that. This is the fabulous River Trent. I've loved every mini of it and thanks for watching. See you next time.